one of the things that emerging artists find really confusing today is with all kinds of paints are all the choices we have and this subscriber asked for us to address the tube whites their titanium white zinc white etc so let's get some clarity about whites If you go to your favorite art supply website or store, you might find a whole array of whites in paint. Some of them are specialty whites. I think some of them were just created for marketing purposes, but some have legitimate differences. And one reason for that is because of the materials that are used to make whites. Now, the materials we, that are most commonly used are the lead carbonate, the titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. Now these are used in all kinds of paints, watercolor, pastel, acrylic, and oils. And I think this person specifically are uh, talking about oils. Uh, and also they're sometimes combined. They they are used uh, in, with, in combination with different binders. That's the material that combines the pigment to create the paint. Uh, so let's take a look. Now here's the one thing that might be surprising to you. The most wonderful white that has the most durability, that, um, that's most flexible, and, uh, most desired by artists, is the one white I don't use and don't have. And why is that? Because it's made of lead, lead carbonate. Lead is poisonous. That white is often called flake white. Now, we have two words. The, it, it's the traditional color. It was used back in uh, uh, Renaissance times and on up until they began to um, expand into other kinds of whites. So there's, we often call it flake white. The original name is Kremnitz white. The flake whites, depending upon the manufacturer, might have a little bit of the zinc oxide in them too to make them a little bit more flexible. But they are toxic. And because they are toxic, we find other substitutes. Now, I know the gambling company has uh, created a substitute. Uh, they simply call it flake white substitute. It has, um, it's, it's kind of a concentrated version of titanium white, as I understand it. But it's built to be very, very close to how the flake white and the Kremnitz white behave. Now, why are these so desirable? Well, I explained that to you. When, uh, there are a lot of things that white needs to do. For one thing, it needs to be flexible in brushing. You need to be able to brush it easily. It needs to have a tinting strength that you can depend upon. That means that when you mix it with colors, you can depend upon how light it's going to make those colors or how much of the white is going, is going to be required to make those colors. Uh, it needs to have, to have a durability as it dries so that when it gets totally dry, it doesn't crack. So there are a number of th things that go into why one would choose a, a particular kind of white or another. Um, but one of those is some of the whites are more transparent and some are more opaque. So I want to go through four whites here and, and see if we can help give you a little bit of clarity on this white business. Now I've got here the flake white substitute. And I put, I've tried to put the same amount of white out on the palette. And so I'm going to try to pick the same amount up when I do this. So the flake white. Now let's first of all I'll put just enough on the brush. And let's see what its transparency is. Now this would be what you would also expect from the, the lead white, the flake white, the Kremnitz white. It's all the same thing. Very opaque. And you, did you see how easily it went on? It's a really variable, a very good brushability. So it goes on very easy the temperature of the white. The flake white uh, is the warmest temperature. The other whites seem to be cooler. So let's compare titanium white in, just for those two things, the brushability and, and transparency, or opacity, either one. I'm going to try to get the same amount of paint on the brush and then you can see what titanium does. Now you, you can, I hope the camera will pick up you see this is slightly warm temperature, a warmer temperature. This is slightly cooler in temperature, but the opacity is about the same. I do want to tell you something about titanium white, though, that uh, 
it is is a concern to a lot of artists and that it is the white that causes the color to sink in so if you do a painting and you've got this, these nice brilliant colors especially when you've mixed white with them and then as they dry those colors begin to get dull that's because the oil has pulled away from the binder has pulled away from the white and left it more chalky on the surface and so we have to do an oiling out process or oiling in uh, in order to pull that brilliance back um, so that's one disadvantage of the tannium white um, but we have the other advantages here it does have a nice reflective quality it reflects the light beautifully and um, it's a little softer than flake white it has a slower drying now one advantage of the flake white it's faster drying. It's the fastest drying of all the whites. And one of the disadvantages that artists complain about a lot is that white, and they're usually talking about it, one of these, uh, white on the palette or white in a painting is the slowest drying of all the other colors or among the slowest drying of all the other colors. And that can be a real pain unless you use um, a, a dryer, an additive into the white that enables it to dry faster. So there we found that... Um, that this is not a bad substitute, a really good substitute to tannium white, except for those slight disadvantages I just mentioned. A good substitute for the flake white if you don't want to work with the uh, toxicity of lead. And I don't. Now, back in the early days when I first started painting, um, I did not know about the toxicity of flake white. In fact, they didn't even tell us what flake white was made of. There were, there were no contents on the packaging back then. It kind of dates me a little bit. So it was not until we discovered that uh, uh, what materials go into making oil paint that we discovered flake white was toxic. And that's when I switched over to uh, different whites. Now, titanium is one I end up with mostly, but there is a choice between titanium white and zinc white. Now, zinc white, as you're going to see, is slightly more transparent. So here's zinc white. I'll try to pull the same amount. You, you'll notice... Um, there's a little feel, different feeling to how it uh, loads on the brush, and um, that's something you'll dis you just have to discover for yourself. It's hard to show how something feels on a video, but you can see here. Can you see that that is slightly transparent? I'll try to pull that enough. You can see just a tiny bit of that black line coming through here. Now, one of the advantages of the zinc white is it's really good. For using a portrait painting because it helps give the luminosity of the skin because of this transparency and if you want to do any glazing uh, where you wanted a mist uh, or something like that the zinc white is a good uh, a good white to glaze with but much so it's much more difficult to glaze with each one of either one of these it has a, so I've talked about the transparency um, an ideal choice for glazing and so on, but there's a disadvantage and a downside, and, and that is it can become more brittle when it dries. So if you paint thick, thick layers of zinc white, it's likely to crack as it dries and gets older and older and older. And for that reason, there are a lot of people who are really conscious of, of um, longevity of their works that will not use zinc white at all. To completely ban it. If they won't even use a color that has zinc oxide in it, uh, but that's a uh, that's a choice. In the in the thinner versions, uh, there's less likely it, it less it's less likely that it's going to crack in thinner versions. So those are the three major whites. Then we have Permalba, which is made by the Weber Company, which is a combination of the zinc white and the titanium white. Now that one ends up being a choice of a lot of artists. It's a little bit um, unstable in, in the sense that uh, if, if it stays in the tube too long, it gets real stringy. And the, uh, all of these have the, um, dang, we might call it danger, all of these will separate, the oil will separate out in them over time. Not so much with the flake white as the other two, but hopefully you would use up a tube of white before that happens. So why would you choose one of the... Oh, I wanted to show you. forgot about the Permalba. Let's don't leave that out. You can see this one. I haven't used Permalba in a long time. And uh, this one you can see is sort of stringy as I pick it up. A little bit hard to, harder to brush. But here's the Permalba. Combination of the zinc white and 
the titanium white a little bit warmer feeling in temperature than zinc. Zinc white is the coolest in temperature. Um, but there, all that is very subtle. Now, one reason that you might want to choose one or the other would be its tinting strength. So I'm going to show you that now. And that is how much white is it going to take to mix into a color to lighten it up. And how easy is it to lighten it up. I'm going to choose ultramarine blue to show you that because it, it has a low tinting strength. That means it takes more white to really change its volume. So I'm going to try to put the same amount of ultramarine blue under each one of these. And I've tried to put the same amount of each of these out. I'll put it's close enough. There's no way to measure this without uh, measuring tools, which I don't use in painting. You should never. But I pretty much have maybe the same amount. I need to just a little bit more right here. Okay. Now let's see. I, try, I have pretty much same amount of ultramarine blue, same amount of, of these four whites. Let's see how that mixes. So what I'm going to do is going to just pull the entire uh, amount of ultramarine blue into the color. And let's watch and see what, how, how it changes. How can these various whites affect um, colors when we mix them together? Um, and, and the ultramarine blue will tell you uh, more about it because it is a low tinting strength itself. Okay, there is one. Now I'll go ahead and show you on the show you comparison side by side here. So this is flake white and this is ultramarine blue. You can see in value that amount is almost a, a middle value. All right, let's see what happens when we mix the uh, same amount of ultramarine blue with the same amount of titanium white. See, there's a lot of science in, in oil painting. All right, now let's go to titanium white and let's see what, how titanium compares with the flake white as to uh, how much ultramarine, how much white it takes to get that same value of ultramarine blue. Let's pull all that together. And when you get it mixed enough, now can you see already, you see just a little bit, just a little bit of difference, but not much. So we can see the better difference when we compare them. So, right here. There we go. So what that tells us then is that uh, in, 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 the, in the tinting strength itself, titanium white is very, very strong. High tinting strength means it doesn't, it would take less titanium white to get this same value. The flake white gives us a ultramarine blue. Hope I don't confuse you on that because the less and more and less and more that sort of thing. But if you can just remember uh, the lighter value we're going to get, that means the stronger the white, uh, the darker the value as comparison, the less strong the white. All right, let's go to zinc white now and try the same thing. So I'll just pull those around together and let's see what zinc white will give us. This is one of the best ways to illustrate and for you to also to, to test out colors. Now can you see how much darker this is than either one of the other two? That's probably enough mixing right there. Be sure I have it. All we need is an approximation of the for the mixture. But you can see it on the palette, but you're going to see it even stronger. Be sure I got this brush very well dried. You see it really strong, much stronger here on the uh, on the chart. Here we go. Look at that. So that tells you that zinc white is the weakest of these three. Now let's see what permalba white will do. All right. Let's pull ultramarine blue into this little stringy patch of permalba white. I, the reason I stopped using permalba white, one reason, is that um, I never loved its brushability. Uh, I did use it for a while because it was, uh, honestly, it, it's uh, not as expensive as some of the other whites. 
but one reason I stopped using it was because of the zinc in it. Um, all right, now there you go. Now let's just do a comparison here, and you're going to see the influence. You kind of, kind of see that this plus this equals that, and that's exactly what it is because those is these two mixed together that makes this one. So here it is. There we go, right there. Now you've got the comparison, and that can tell you uh, if, if you want, uh, if you're using titanium white, it's going to take less of the white um, to, to raise the value of, of the colors. So you can make your choice, and my suggestion is if you're a portrait painter, you might want to have both zinc white and titanium white on hand because they have each have those different qualities, the titanium uh, being able to give you those really brilliant uh, the really brilliant um, lumina luminous lights, uh, whereas the zinc white will give you that luminosity of the skin. I hope I didn't contradict myself there. A permeable white to me um, is sort of just kind of an average. I'm not real, well I shouldn't give you my opinion <laughs> about it, but you, you could try it for yourself. But my opinion is that Find a white that works for you and don't let don't be bothered by anything else. Because remember, there are lots of whites on the market that are more for marketing than they are for actual purposes. Uh, they'll do just sing, some of them will do singular little things. They're kind of like uh, tricks to trick you into um, getting certain effects where you could get the same effects if you just use one of these whites and maybe a combination of color. So. Uh, that's the story of whites, and I hope now I've made it a little bit clearer for you. Be sure to view all of our quick tips. While you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section, and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DianeMize.com, where I have full-length lessons downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.